uh, with the Communications Pathway Series. Okay, I believe you all are familiar with these. Uh, for some of you, uh, you're familiar. Others, uh, it might be your initial look at it. So uh, we're going to take the time to go through uh, four of them today. And uh, Tim, I want to introduce Tim also. He's in the studio back in uh, back in New Jersey. And uh, he's going to have the equipment out there, and he can uh, basically show you the equipment in the hands-on. How's it going, everyone? I uh, worked with most of you a couple weeks ago, and it was a pleasure, and I can't wait to see you guys implement this. And can you all, can you all see? Okay, when I... Okay, Tim, you popped out there for a while. Now you're back. Anyway, the introductions and the locations. Um, there's the overview of what we're going to be doing. It's essentially the copper programs, so the copper base programs, uh, a part of CPS, as well as the exploring green, which is uh, a little bit different. And we'll be going over the, uh, the attributes of all those programs. Uh, please text your questions if you have any in the uh, text box, and uh, we'll address those as we get through each of the programs. Uh, we uh, currently uh, have everyone muted. Uh, but we will unmute uh, as we go through uh, each of the programs. We'll give you a chance to uh, give us your thoughts. Um, these uh, professional development series are designed to be going on for uh, up until May. And a lot of you will be running the programs by then. And uh, this is some of the uh, some of the ideas that uh, we're going to work together to uh, uh, work with the delivery methods, the programs. and. Uh, get you off to a good start and uh, provide the information for your students. Okay, and that's uh, our, ga our goal, our game plan, if you will, for the, uh, for the PD sessions in the future, okay? Okay, then we're gonna ask which ones have you completed, which ones you're working with, uh, what would you like to see uh, in PD sessions, or uh, which, which particular programs you'd like to, uh, Discover. Um, as you know, all the programs come with instructor manual uh, with the simplified lesson plans. Assessments are all in the instructor manual as well. And if you feel the students have done uh, sufficient, it's up to you to uh, print them. If it's a writable PDF, you can print the certificate of completion. Of course, you're going to get a flash drive with the media, all the movies and supporting videos uh, used in the uh, in the program. And as you know, the programs are each of them are 10, about 10 hours long, uh, rich in activities. As you can see, here's an activity list right here. And uh, some of the assessments uh, that you, if you need a daily grade or whatever, uh, to, uh, to fill those out. I'd also like to uh, add that there's a YouTube video uh, under CTEC, um, the Middle School CTE Question Management. It's about 55 minutes long, and I, I'm sure if you check it out, you'll find it uh, with uh, a lot of good information, a lot of tips on how to uh, conduct uh, CTE-type uh, programs in your school for your environment. And uh, so check that out. All these programs are also uh, recorded, and they're up on the uh, website as well. So they'll be labeled uh, by the specific program. Today's would be labeled... Uh, uh, the telecom evolution through uh, green. We'll start with telecom evolution. Um, that would be the first in the uh, line of programs. Basically, it goes into uh, uh, basic communications with telegraph. Students are actually going to build a telegraph. Uh, can you all see Tim? Tim, are you there? I can see Tim. Okay, and Tim has the hardware right there in the uh, in front of him. Uh, these are groups. You'll notice there's a case there. That that's each one of these kits is designed for uh, for four students, and we like to have two students on a device uh, to uh, enhance the communications and collaboration skills. Okay. <laughs> Here's uh, some of the support. Anytime you see this icon here, this represents supporting videos in uh, in all of the programs. Um, and then here's some of the ones that would be in the uh, uh, Telecom Evolution. Okay, there's your kit, your uh, crimpers, 
your screwdrivers. And of course, anytime they're dealing with tools or cables, we encourage the use of safety glasses, uh, just like they would on the job. And uh, so you have the two telegraph activity boards, the jacks, I'm sorry, the plugs that they're going to terminate the cables with, and then some wire they're going to wind the, uh, wind the electromagnet. And of course, they're going to assemble this entire thing. So it's parts, parts accountability, uh, those kinds of things. Following directions. And then here's a list of the activities in that program. We're actually going to draw out a telegraph circuit, uh, make it work uh, through the use of an electromagnet and then connect those up with a cable that they make uh, in class and communicate between the two units over data, basically. Of course, we're going to get into the uh, communication process. You'll note here on the uh, bottom of the presentation is the page numbers that are in the, uh, in the book. History of communications, right? ciphers, smoke signals, Gutenberg, Okay, encoding and decoding, as we all know, a message has to be encoded and then uh, sent through a medium and decoded by a receiver. Telephone cones, ciphers, a little bit of history. Telegraph, Morse code. Okay. Back in the olden days, I don't know if Tim mentioned this when he was in training with y'all, but uh, telegraph lines used to be wrote, written, uh, or used to be placed along the right-of-ways of the uh, railroad lines. Well, today, uh, that's done with fiber optic line. That's done with fiber optic cable. And in fact, uh, SPRINT is an acronym that means Southern Pacific Rail. Here's a closer look at the basic uh, tab layout. All right, tab layout. Um, you'd have a battery and a switch and a buzzer, and it's up to the students to uh, connect their eyes with wires and, and build a little keyer there where they can uh, make a telegraph. Does that all make sense so far? There's a constructed uh, tap. All you need now, all you need to do now is activate the switch, and uh, you have a simple Simple telegraph. This board also has a light on it, and by the use of these con conductors here, these uh, terminals, you're able to uh, send the energy over a, uh, a two-pair telephone cable that they're going to construct in class, and that's how they work together. There's the parts. Okay, parts, parts accountability. It might look overwhelming to a student at first, but uh, it's really pretty simple once you put it together once. Of course, we have the wires, jumper wires, and all the assembly procedures. Of course, I'll add the key to it. You know, you could bypass that and just set the buzzer off, or you could put the key on there, just like an old-time telegraph. There's winding, winding the electromagnet, okay? You're gonna get some sandpaper in here and they're gonna have to clean off the edge of this and get down to the copper and then connectorize this. And then when this is energized, it will form a magnet and it will pull, pull that piece of metal down and make a clicking noise, just like a telegraph would work. Two pair of color code. Okay, Christmas trees and bumblebees, red and green. Pair one, black and yellow, pair two. And then, they, of course, they're going to construct a, uh, a telephone cable. There's movies on the subject. And then they're going to energize these ports here to be able to communicate with each, with each other. You can also have the light and the buzzer operate when it's active as well. Does that make sense so far? And then, of course, we're going to bring in a little bit of math. Uh, Ohm's law will give them the uh, the resistance of the wires and ask them how far apart these things could really work. Well, how long can the two pair cable be before it stops working, essentially? 
And that is telecom evolution. Uh, Tim, do you have anything to show us? Uh, not really. Actually, my students, when I went there in class, I allowed them to uh, play around with them, and we actually did the three different connecting activities. So they have experience with the LED, the buzzer, and also communicating with each other. Okay. If any of the teachers have questions, you could just type it in the chat or unmute yourself and ask. Please feel free to do that. What we provided here would be the basics of uh, the communications. And uh, as you can see, Tim's setting up for the next program. If there's not any questions, we'll move on to that. So Mission Breakout is the, the next program in the uh, in the series and uh, just like the, all the other programs it's going to be 10 hours long there's going to be between 15 and 17 activities uh, you're going to have a case that contains the contents for four students and you're going to have enough materials um, uh, to run the program several times this, in this program there are consumable students uh, do make data cables and of course we have the part numbers if you need to uh, read get some more parts. So supporting videos in this program, okay, mission breakout overview, talk about wires, twisted, solid, and then of course when you talk about uh, network cabling, it falls into two different standards depending on if it's a residential or a commercial application. And then uh, we get into the connectors and then uh, crossover cables. Uh, with data cables, you know, the simple one that plugs from your computer into the wall, uh, they can either be straight through, like you most likely have, or they could be a crossover cable. When uh, when you're hooking like devices, you would have crossover cables that would have one configuration on one side and another configuration on the other. Uh, students would use these to hook up uh, two computers or even two Xboxes. And all of our programs have a little career planning. Uh, attribute at the tail end of it, a little career awareness. There you can see the uh, hardware. This device up here on the uh, on the top is uh, part of the instructor kit where the instructor can send faults to the other units, the student satellite unit, and the students are able to uh, detect uh, what the problem is and reconfigure the jumpers to correct whatever faults that they're being uh, given but based on the results of these indicator lights, the way they sequence and what color they are. Students can also run this head to head, almost like a You Sunk My Battleship, where they just go head to head with each other in, uh, in uh, determining faults, putting faults in and then having the other team determine what they are. Here are some of the activities. Okay. A lot about color codes, faults, troubleshooting, and then of course how to make a patch cord. American wire gauge, table, basically table lookups, okay. And then uh, how four pairs are uh, arranged in a tip and a ring. So each pair would have a tip and a ring, all right, and how those are configured inside of a plug. You would think it would be White, blue, blue on down the line. No, in fact, it starts with uh, with the orange, and the blue is in the middle, as you can see here. Take a look at the cables. Let the students investigate. If you'll notice, when you look at these, you're going to have four pairs of cables, and you'll also notice that some of them are twisted tighter than others. That's done for noise cancellation. We get into that a little bit as well. A little bit about twist length because they're twisted at a different rate. If you have a very long run of cable, of course, one cable is going to be longer than the other. So we had a chance to bring in some mathematics here to calculate what that difference would be. And uh, that's how it's done with uh, basically percentages. Color codes. Okay. Sometimes the... Uh, 
sometimes it's a, a white color versus it wouldn't be a white orange where it would down here. So uh, these could be very difficult to work with, whereas these would be more friendly when you start separating those wires to know which is, uh, which is which. There's the codes right there. Notice that pair one is in the middle. All right, tip and ring. And then pair two straddles that. Pair three is over here and pair four is over here. On, on this one, the only difference is the placement of pairs two and pair three. Okay. This would be this side over here is your residential, and this side over here is your commercial. Can we talk about continuity and configuration. Just because the signal is getting to the other end doesn't mean it's going to the right conductor. And then here's how the instructor would set this up with who could fault that. He could change his cables on his to create a fault. That would be transmitted to the student units, and the students at units would read the indicators on their lights, and they would be able to configure it to where it would uh, be back to normal again. This is actually uh, Boolean algebra and uh, logic. But it's a really fun interactive game. Okay. And then here's how the uh, instructor would set up his, his unit for the student units. And it all comes down to what's coming in and then how, how you would adjust the breakout to correct the fall based on the color and sequencing of the lights. Okay. Essentially, the way this is laid out is we're going to give the students faults. For example, this one's reversed. So when this one comes up, this is the three is going to be red. Okay. So we have the students go through and practice with a couple of faults. And then after that, we have them make a cable. So when they make their cable and it doesn't work, they'll be able to tell you exactly what's going on. That's how we scaffold that in. Here's where a student unit can go in a head to head mode where you'd have a director and a troubleshooter. The director would induce faults, the troubleshooter would fix them. And then they can, of course, swap roles. Troubleshooting sheet for uh, how to get that done. And then making a patch cord. And there's movies on this. What you're looking for. Nice termination versus uh, other conditions. And then testing their cable. And then that's mission breakout. Tim, what do you have anything to show us? So right now I have on the first one, which we're going to act as the instructor, I have pair one reversed, and you'll see the red LED light up. And then on the second one, I reverse the call so to show what happens when you fix the issue. So the game that the students play for the battleship or the activity that you can do, this is going to be the person creating the error while this is the person fixing it. And as you guys can see with the LEDs on it, it's going to have a red pair one on this guy, while it's green on this one because it is corrected. Okay. Well, so far up to this point, we've uh, we've done a two pair, and then uh, now your students are familiarized with four pair cabling systems. Okay, and now we're going to add coax, which is uh, uh, another type of cabling system, like you have for your satellite systems or even your television systems. We're going to add that to the two pair and the four pair. We're going to put it all together in Connectivity Conquest. And what you're looking at here in Connectivity Conquest is uh, the connectivity of a house, essentially. And we're going to have the students go through and investigate two pair, coax, how it's routed. Like, for example, this would be the box on your outside of the house. This is what they call the NID, okay, the network interface device. Uh, your NID has to have a means of disconnect. Okay, if you don't pay your bill or you just move into a house and you want to get connected, um, this is where that would take place. And then from there, it goes would go to a structured media center. Uh, the structured media center would be somewhere in your uh, basement, uh, your garage, or even a closet in an apartment. And then from there, 
all your information would be routed to the different outlets. So here you have the uh, the bedroom on the left that has a computer and a, a phone and a, and, a, and a television, and your kitchen's in the middle that has your uh, telephone and a, and a television. Then you have a home office that has uh, a couple of telephones, uh, one for a fax and uh, a regular telephone, and then two data ports. Okay, we have a wireless. We have a router here that's also wireless, and then you have a telephone distribution center right here. Okay. They're also going to, in this course, uh, they're going to make, they're going to test, construct and test a coax cable. Okay. For uh, basically what's used in television and satellite communications today. This is what it would look like. Uh, as far as, the, as far as the hardware that would be in the kit, remember one kit's good for four, okay? So you're gonna have the testers and they're gonna have the means to make a coaxial cable with uh, screw-on connectors. Of course, safety glasses. And then here's your, uh, your coax strippers. Some of the hardware. Okay, Tim has the hardware there, and that's what it looks like. Now, one of the things we do have is each one of those outlets has an extender, okay? And uh, that extender, basically, you don't have to have 12 students piled around that, uh, that board. They can actually put the extenders in and extend them out for another 10 feet. So that's a, a pretty popular part of the whole program as well. Okay, there's your extenders, and of course there's an overview video on how to hook these things up. Those extenders can be tested independently or they can be tested through the system. We're gonna talk about smart homes and what's going on and what that board represents in a home. Smart home connectivity all the way from the mid. On the outside of the building to the structured media center to the outlet. And then, of course, the parts of the display. The different types of connectivity, the coaxial, the uh, telephone, and the data, and how those are arranged. And then they're going to go through and they're going to work with the demarcation point. Or this is where it comes into your building. Well, basically, it comes in here. Here's your point of connect and disconnect, and then on into the uh, the system. We're going to talk about coax systems, and they're going to the students are going to map out how that's all wired. They're going to test it and construct it. Okay, they're going to construct a uh, coax cable. Of course, there's a movie on there. So we have safety glasses on when we do this. Okay, and then they're going to just basically, and that's an example of what they would map out in the in the system. A little bit of math, a little bit of science, a little bit of history here is Newton's canon. We talk about that geosynchronous orbits. How to, uh, you know, thirty thousand miles is uh, thirty six thousand miles is the same rotation, the same fall rate as the rotation of the Earth. How to site a satellite, what you're looking for when you do that. And then some of the tools uh, that are involved in the, how, to, how to set up a satellite, if you have a dish antenna or whatever. And then telephone connectivity, including fax machines. And then telephone system connectivity. All the way through. Uh, so we've done the, the telephone so far. We've done the coax in a home, and then uh, next would be the data, simulated DSL. Okay, 
a little bit about bits and bytes and scientific notation. Once again, you're back to the uh, four pair color code. Wireless systems, of course, are included. And then essentially they're gonna go through and map out the data section as well and how that's all connected. At the completion of this, we're gonna be given problems where they have to come up with solutions and workarounds. And of course, there's some of your supports. And of course, you have our CTEC instructor portal. And of course, you can always uh, email Tim or myself. Uh, I'm sure you have Tim's contact information. Tim, you want to show him some of that uh, from our studio in New Jersey? Yep. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is the connectivity throughout the whole circuit. So going through the demarcation point, I'm going to put in my transmitter. And you will be able to follow through looking for nearly any Ethernet access point or CAT5. Are going to be telephone jack and the black is going to be CAT5. So going through this, it will allow me to go through at 5 jack and receive all four LEDs lighted, showing a completion of the circuit and actual uh, connectivity throughout it, along with configuration. Next, I'm going to show you guys with the coaxial cables, which I know in my class when I taught it, I had you guys make these yourselves. You have to take them home too. And again, going through the EMARC point, you'll be able to connect and then transmit to yourself anywhere that the coaxial comes through. And this is the type of cable they're going to be making in the course as well, the coax cable. So up to this point, as I said before, we get in from all the way from simple communication systems uh, all the way through smart home connectivity. And that includes uh, even the wireless router, satellite communications, office communications, smart home, smart office. And this guy is a very good way to get your students understanding a little bit more of the backbone of the structure of residential houses. And uh, it also works very similarly with businesses, just on a much larger scale. Going through this, I'll have the first LED pop up on this, showing that there is connection throughout the whole circuit. And Bill, that's about all that I have for this. Anything else you want to share? No. Any, uh, does anyone have any questions? <laughs>